All right, here we go with comments. A complete HydroCAD simple project generating a basin and a manhole pond. Basically, we're always going to use uh, manholes. We'll make them ponds. Always, always, always in the software. There's other ways around it. Later on, you can change it when you do your projects, but that's the general recommendation that you deal with subcatchments or drainage areas and then ponds. First off, don't want to ruin it for you, but click here to open project. I'm just going to call this a temp, temp A in a hexadecimal world, 0 through 9, A through H, I think. All right, so again, we've done this before. You want to make sure that you want to go and set, set these things up. You have SCS, Soil Conservation Service, which is basically the NRCS rainfall. You should have some storms defined. And so the storms that we're going to define for around here are based on geography and history. A 6 inch rainfall we will call 100-YR. We will save that one and for now we'll just go ahead and put a 4.2 inch one in as a 10 year. 4.8 and those are based on history and the history doesn't always work. Once you have those two things set up it should basically um, work for you. I'm going to show you can view the storm. It shows you basically different an intensity graph and then a depth graph, cumulative depth, depth graph. This should look very similar to something you've seen in the past. You can go through and look at all these different ones here. We'll look at a 24 hour. It's a little different. Notice it's not as intense. The slope of the intensity curve there, that looks a little bit different in terms of Seattle storm. So I'm going to go ahead and click that off. It gives you all these comparisons. So this software, incredibly, incredibly great and free. If you don't want to get it, that's fine. Pull the subcatchment. We're going to use a lot of one acre parking lot and one acre meadow in this world. So I'll do both right now. Right click. You're going to edit it. Area. We use large areas, one acre. Curve number, you can look it up, but you should know that a curve number of 98 is a parking lot. You hit OK here, right click, edit. Area, you have it down, time of concentration, the time it takes from the longest the longest raindrop to go from the farthest spot to the point of interest. Once again, the slow the shortest minute, shortest time you're going to use in small urban hydrology is five minutes. So you can just go to here, direct entry, hit OK. You're going to get used to these five minute ones five minutes and then description is direct entry. Over time you'll be changing these out but once you can really understand acceleration, velocity, and position we'll really start using a little bit more. Right now we're going to do these estimates on velocities, velocity of the raindrop, the velocity of the sheet flow, the velocity of the shallow concentrated flow, and then the velocity of the um, trapezoidal flow or open channel flow. Once you've got those two things done, enter notes, hit OK, you have the whole basin defined. You can right click, get a node report, and you see in that that you get six CFS, six CFS peak, right, and about, um, let's see, rainfall, about more than 3.65 inches off of a 4.2 based, yeah, which makes sense. You don't get all your rain, but you get most of it. And that's actually a little bit lower than I would expect. You can now do it again, now once again, for the 100 year and right click and get a node report. On the 100 year rainfall, for 6 inches, you get 5.27 inches off. And so there's a percentage there, and you get about 9 CFS. So you're going to see these 6 is the amount of rainfall but it generates a peak of 9 CFS in a small basin and I once again I'll go back these are numbers we start to put in our heads they're worthwhile you'll see why later right click node report and 6 inches I'm sorry 4.2 generates 6 CFS so you kinda have this kinda ratcheting up of about the in the the flow rate being about 50% more than the rainfall when the rainfall is in inches and the peak flow rate is in cubic feet per second. We'll talk again about those units not working out. These are one-offs and these are for the parking lot, not for the sponge. And you're going to see here lots of error messages come up. 
Now, once we've got that defined, the next thing to do is to define a pond. And you can right click, you only get five nodes. So you're going to edit the ponds. And what you're going to use is you're going to typically, you're not going to use catch basin here. You're going to use a detention pond. But over time, but right now, I'm going to put a pond who has no significant storage. I'm going to call this just a catch basin. We will not do this in the future. This is for demonstrations of how easy the software works. We will put the detention pond with its description of topography, which you will get off of another program like SketchUp or AutoCAD or just by using your brain a little bit when we think about standard shapes. Hit OK. We're going to go to the outlets. You want to put the bottom one first, the final outlet first, so we're going to put an invert elevation of 100. Remember, elevation, lots of different ones, and we're going to go ahead and put culvert very often. Culvert has an outlet elevation. We'll call it 100 coming out. And that's the inlet to the culvert. The outlet we'll call 99.00. In other words, it drops 100 feet, 1 foot and 100 feet. That gets us a slope notice the pure number and then look up for Manning's number though very often we'll use 0.013 that is the relative roughness of the pipe entrance basically corrugated metal pipe concrete reinforced concrete pipe box culvert um, don't even know that one we have to figure that one out reinforced concrete pipe so different basically energy losses walking in which we haven't talked a lot about now so we'll just generally pick a Look at the number there. The lower that number, the less energy that's lost at intake to the water. You have to finally put a diameter. We'll put a diameter here for now in inches. Put a tab here. We can go ahead and kind of describe that. I think that's all you need to do. Now you right click, you reroute from to two pond, hit OK, it drafts that. Now you can right click and get a node report lots of errors and you see that all the water coming in comes out and that will not be the case. Once again this was for at 6 CFS for 1 acres that was a 4.2 inch or a 10 year storm. We can go through and do the same thing with a 100 year storm. Once again right click, node report and you see that all of it basically what comes in comes out that which would make sense and you notice however that it needs to back up 8 feet, 8 feet in that basin to project the water through there. That's because when we start talking about the cross-sectional area of a one-foot pipe is one-half of that of a two-foot pipe. So that it's a quarter pi for an area and then it flows at three to ten feet per second. You're going to see why this works out to be the same. However, we can go back here right now and just to learn how to edit. We can go back to the outlet here and we can edit the outlet and we can change its diameter to something like 36. Right, 36 will be one and a half times a two foot pipe, 1.5 squared is something like 225. So this is going to be about 2.25 pi, and then it's going to carry, in terms of an area, it's going to carry a lot more water. That's why you kind of learn that kind of concept of comparison to the unit circle. You hear it coming back? The unit circle. Okay. Hit a right click here and node report and you notice this time the water doesn't go up we still generate it all through i'm going to point out as i finish this out in 10 minutes what we've done that's not correct and that is the fact that we will not be defining these catch basins as catch basins we'll be defining them as ponds i won't do that here but i'm going to go ahead and just go ahead and quick and change this now do the same thing because i get five nodes i'm going to right click edit it this time i'm going to change the area once again to one acre checking that the large areas are hit, time of concentration. We're going to go ahead use direct entry once again, five minutes. You see that the minutes changes the peak, not the volume. Hit that OK. OK, and then it can't be blank. A, a metal you'll see later, and a type B soil is about a 58. You can look it up. Once again, we can go ahead and this time right click. We can do a reroute and put that to the same pond. In other words, these could both go into the same basin. You can do this two different ways. Sometimes you can just kind of do a weighted average of the two. But in this case, 
we might have two different sides of the road going to the same catch basin. Now when do right click, add a known report, you see that only generates three CFS, it's still an acre, for a six inch of rainfall, and this one generates nine CFS. So you get only a third of the runoff off of this meadow type B soil that you do from a catch basin. Third of the peak, and even as you look at it, if you look at the node report, you still get that same general peak. You go back here now and you'll see the additive waves that we started talking about that you get 11.69. And so this concept of how waves are going to be added, you're going to see as we can play with this to lag it out in large basins. You would not see that in this basin because it is small five minutes. Figuring water running at two feet per second once it gets in the shallow concentrated, I'm sorry, into um, shallow concentrated flow, it runs at two to three feet per second um, over asphalt, slower than that over grass. You can see how five minutes, we'll talk about how big is a five minute drainage basin. It works for most highway design um, in small urban hydrology, it's called. So that in fact is pretty much all of Hydrocad with the exception of how you define a pond. So I'll try to finish in the last three minutes very quickly to go ahead and show you what a pond looks like. Right click, edit it. You have to, in the tension basin pond, you deal with storage and then you deal with outlets. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the storage and you're gonna start bottom to top. We're not gonna use large units. We're gonna start with 100. We're gonna edit the storage. We're gonna call it, in this case, very often we're gonna use custom stage data. So custom stage data is going to do this. We're going to do it with surface area as a rule. We're going to go ahead and put the bottom at 100 feet with the square foot area perhaps maybe of 100 feet. Maybe at the next contour might be 102 and that area might be probably in the order of maybe 300. Maybe the next one might be 104 and we'll keep it in the even contours just so you get used to the kind of data that's pulled off of other programs might be 600 on on up and we're going to always make this surface data much higher than we ever think the water will ever go much higher make your ponds bigger in the software than you ever expect them to go than you ever expect them to go than you ever expect them to go that key thing is going to really help once you do that, you can go to your outlets here, and you can edit your first outlet. Once again, we'll very often use culvert. We'll go ahead and 100 is our elevation. Outlet interviewed is 99. Length of 100, we'll be changing these over time. Manning's number you're going to learn for concrete is 0.013. And then we'll make a diameter here of, once again, 12 inches and see what happens. Now once you've gone through, you can see the perimeter, the area, all those numbers that you know anyway. We'll go with a reinforced concrete pipe, groove ended projecting. You look at the smaller the number, the less energy lost. You hit here, and basically what you're going to see now, I can go right click, and I can reroute that number three to number four. And then eventually I can take number four and reroute it to number two, and you start to see what's possible. Well, this is at the end of what you get from the free version. So now we've got a basin. This, if you remember, was um, a meadow. This is a parking lot. And we hit here, and we hit node report. And you see that you really don't have any storage there because we didn't put much cross-sectional area there and because of the size of the pipe leaving it. If I now instead go right-click, edit this, and change its outlet, added outlet to something very small, like two inches, you'll see some accumulation of depth when I hit node report. You can see that it actually mitigates and you know it actually takes that peak out a little bit. And then in the end we see we'll see what happens here. Right click, node report. You gotta love the sounds. Even though you've got some accumulation there, um, you're gonna see we have not shifted the time curves that much and you see that's why you start to see these things over here. So that's a quick one-off through, 15 minutes. You haven't watched it up till now, watch it. If you haven't gotten the software, get really good at Excel. Thanks for listening.